Good afternoon. Oh, thank you. So, <laughs> I'll quickly run through the Zambia's experience. Uh, mainly, it's the focus on hotspot mapping and simplicity of what we did to identify the hotspots. Uh, so, you can see uh, Zambia is surrounded by uh, countries landlocked. We have no uh, access to the ocean. But it can be an advantage, it can be a disadvantage. So for cholera elimination, we are taking into the consideration our neighbors and seeing uh, how the cholera is evolving in our neighbors as well. So <clears throat> the process of identification of hotspot first started with recognition of uh, the burden. So we reviewed the data from uh, 1970 to uh, 2017. And you can see that 29 outbreaks have been reported with four major outbreaks that have numbers uh, uh, beyond um, 6,000. So from this, I think lessons were learned that we needed to really uh, target uh, hotspots and uh, key wash interventions. And I think this is what led to the resolution uh, to sponsor the end cholera strategy in 2025 for Zambia. So three method, uh, methods were used. Uh, one, which just took two days, uh, where WHO, Ministry of Health, and then NPHI and partners sat down to review the data. Um, the other two methods uh, were done uh, together with our partners, UNICEF and uh, uh, CIDAS. So uh, the two days approach, uh, basically uh, reviewing data from 1970 to 2017, uh, there was a bit of sparsity between uh, uh, 1970 and uh, 2008, and data came in various formats that were difficult to analyze. But from 2008 to 2017, uh, it was easier to analyze uh, the data, uh, and that's what we depended on mostly. Then we convened a team of experts uh, for two days, and... Uh, reviewed the data and also uh, looked at some of the um, uh, situation, uh, the context, and some of the wash indicators. So from that analysis, we are able to def uh, identify the hotspots. Uh, these are some of the contextual findings that we have been discussed here. Recurrency of outbreaks, poor wash, and some of the uh, contextual findings like transit points, presence of slums, uh, flood prone areas, the fishing camps. And from this, we are able to prioritize <coughs> um, high priority, medium priority, low priority. So basically, 37 at risk areas were identified. And as we said, the hotspots were basically a subset of the at risk areas. So from that, um, the pool of 37, we said the first 12 are a priority. Initially, we identified 10, but after considerations, we said we can still add two more so that we concentrate on the first 10 as hotspots, whilst we continue also to invest in washing the other areas. So you can see... Uh, it's not working, eh? Ah, technology, okay. So... You can see here, we have water bodies. Uh, and here, mainly this, again, is water bodies, the Kafiwe Flats. Here is where Lusaka is, mainly population issues and slums. Here, again, we have water bodies, fishing camps. And then here, again, we have a lot of water bodies and also neighboring in our country, which has recurrences. And here, also, we have water bodies. So this is based on analysis of data and the situation concept. In two days, we are able to fish out 12, 12 districts. Then our partners, uh, uh, UNICEF, I think they had been working for a period of over one year. Um, they got data from various sources, Ministry of Health inclusive. Uh, they also got some GIS shape files for the provinces, some population data, uh, rainfall data, and then they analyzed that data using various statistical methods, including the smothering interpretation. Um, and they were also able to classify uh, the hotspots. So you can see they, they took more than a year, but almost similar findings. These water bodies in Siavonga 
again in Lusaka, uh, Chongwe, they have they have again the central province, um, and then they have the the northern wing, which we also managed to have in that two days. So the only difference I think was this copper belt. I think for our analysis, these these two did not report cholera in the recent uh, uh, past. So again, there was some work done by Ciders. Again, this was a rep retrospective study. Uh, so they were able to get data again from MOH and other <coughs> uh, data sources, including uh, uh, Central Statistics Office, socioeconomic data from um, Living Conditions Service. Um, they also looked at the WASH data, and uh, they applied a little bit more statistical analysis, <coughs> the spatial scan test and the poison re uh, regression. And using this analysis, they were able to come up with the hotspots. So again, you see similarities even with this approach. The water bodies coming out, Lusaka coming out, and even the northern area. So one difference with this method is uh, they picked out this uh, district, and this which we didn't have in our priority. But we had them in the at risk, but not as priority. But even what they picked out, you see, is not in red, like high density, it's still somewhere around medium. So in, in, in our two days analysis, these were falling under the at risk. So if you compare the three approaches, we seem to be talking to each other. See the non, <laughs> northern wing, the central part, and the southern. This is what the two days analysis was able to do, similar to what UNICEF found, and also uh, what uh, Ciders was able to find. But putting all these uh, evidence together, because it's the same country and same data sources, we are able to have one map. So we said all these in pink uh, are supposed to be high risk because uh, <coughs> we didn't uh, uh, prioritize them as immediate uh, 12. Then the rest of the districts now became our hotspot. So this, this is our experience from Zambia, and our key lessons is that cholera surveillance data can be used to map hotspots at low cost. Again, special attention to hotspots is key in the development of cholera elimination. Even when we are investing in the low cost, again, our key message is that even the, at the high-risk areas are supposed to make sure that they also improve the wash indicators. And this is illustrated in our elimination plan that we are investing, prioritizing the hotspots, but bearing in mind that we have other at-risk areas which should eliminate. Thank you.